everybody, my name is Peter Dorwood and I'm based at uh, University of Reading in the UK and I'm going to be talking now about PIXA which stands for Participatory Integrated Climate Services for Agriculture which is an approach for uh, rural advisory services, extension workers and volunteer farmers to share with other farmers about climate change and climate variability and what they can do about it. So I'm going to provide an overview of PIXA and what it is and then my colleague Graham Clarkson is going to give a few results from some monitoring and evaluation and some re uh, lessons learned. So we started working on PIXA in 2011 uh, in Zimbabwe and we've developed it working with extension services uh, and farmers in a number of different countries which you can see on that slide and we've developed it in a way where we've learned from our mistakes and from our successes uh, and improved it as we've gone along. <clears throat> so what is PIXA? PIXA puts farmers right at the center of everything that we do. And farmers, as you know, face challenges and opportunities. Uh, one of those challenges uh, is climate. And PIXA provides both climate information, both historical climate information and forecasts. But very importantly, it also introduces options. So what practically can farmers do about climate change and climate variability? And it looks at uh, options in terms of crops, in terms of livestock, and in terms of livelihoods. And then thirdly, it also uses participatory uh, tools to help farmers and extension staff explore those options and see which ones fit the farmer's conditions best. Two other things. The farmer decides, and the whole principle of PIXA is that we're trying to support farmers to make the best decisions that they want to. And the other is options by context, and that is that different farmers, maybe neighbours, have different conditions, different soils, different levels of wealth. And so the options we provide, uh, or that rather that they choose, may be different for those different contexts. So PIXA is an extension approach, if you like, and it's uh, used by extension workers working with groups of farmers. So it's not that doesn't require setting up new groups or anything it's something that can be slotted in as part of normal practice and normal activities and it's done through a series of visits by the extension worker working with existing groups of farmers and it starts with what the farmers currently do looking at and sharing with farmers what are they doing at the moment and to help with this we do some exercises but one of which is to look at farmers current resources and activities so here's a map a farmer has drawn of their farm and it's showing both what is on the farm, the crops that they're growing, the livestock they have, uh, the income they have also from off farm. And each farmer does this and it's like a starting place of their current situation and how climate is affecting it. We then look at the historical climate information which we get by working closely with the MET services. And here is a graph that um, shows the total rainfall. And if you look at the, the green arrow, I can operate it. Um, on this side here, on this axis here, we have the total amount of rainfall that has fallen in a location. And then along the bottom here, we have uh, each year. So we can see here that in 1969, there was this much rainfall. And in 1990, just to pick an example, there was this much rainfall. And farmers, we found, understand these graphs very clearly if they're introduced and explained in a, in a very clear way. And these graphs tell us a lot about the climate. We also look at temperature graphs and look at whether the temperature is increasing or decreasing and what trends are going on. So these graphs, and we, we look at a range of graphs, we look at not just for total rainfall, but also for seasonal start dates. Um, so when the season starts, um, the dates of the end of the season, the length of the season, the occurrence of dry spells, so once we have this data and we're working with MET services, we can produce those graphs and look at them with farmers to look at a whole range of things. And it helps us to see uh, whether the climate is changing and how it's changing. So do we see the line heading in one direction? Do we see decreasing amounts of rainfall or increasing amounts of rainfall or increased variability or increased dry spells? And it's really important looking at this because farmers have their own perceptions and memories, which are tremendously important. Um, but they're really interested in looking at this because they don't actually measure rainfall normally. Most farmers don't have the opportunity to measure rainfall. They're looking at 
other indicators. So they're very interested in looking at this. And one of the things that really strikes people is the variability, how much the rainfall goes up and down between years, between seasons, and, and how, how variable the rainfall and the starts and the end of the season and everything are. So here are farmers in Kenya, and they've gone one step further. They are now looking at the graphs and they're working out um, the numbers of years in which there's been higher than a certain amount of rainfall. And there's all sorts of things that we can do with these graphs to look at uh, what crops are most suitable for the area, which varieties have the highest chance of surviving in the area, given the amount of water and the start and end dates that the graphs are telling us. So it's a very practical um, use of these that we make with farmers. Then we go on to look at the different crop, livestock and livelihood options. So crop options can include varieties, but also the way we manage the crops and livestock options can include what livestock are best suited, what breeds, but again, how do we manage them for that particular climate? And then the livelihood options. So these are other livelihoods other than crops and livestock. So farmers, as we all know, uh, use a range of different livelihood activities, off farm activities, whether it be adding value to something, petty sales, uh, money coming in from relatives. These are all part of, of their overall livelihoods and part of dealing with climate change and variability. So we look at the options with farmers through some participatory exercises. And here, this is called an options table or an options matrix. On this left hand side, the farmer and the extension worker have identified some practices or options that may be best suited to that location. And then, and just to explain that, these are um, in this location, they've identified a method of cultivation, composting, agroforestry, and open pollinated variety of, of maize. And normally there would be many more options listed down here. And then through this table, which I won't go into the details, the farmers just discuss the benefits and the limitations of each of these options. And it helps people to get an indication of whether they are interested in that option, whether it would fit with their farm, whether it's something that they are interested in doing. They also do a similar exercise for livestock and for livelihoods. And at the end of that, they produce or they do uh, what's called a participatory budget. So farmers select the options that they are most interested in exploring and which of course is all relates back to meeting the climate and the local climate that we've been discussing with the farmers and looking at them. And they pick from those options, that basket of options, if you like, which ones they're interested in, in, in possibly uh, implementing. And they develop what we call a participatory budget. And a participatory budget just looks at the activities and when they happen. So this could be months going along here for a crop, or it could be weeks if it was looking at poultry and looks at the activities that the farmer would need to do in in that time period in that particular month the inputs required uh, family labor any outputs any produce consumed and any cash balance profit and then they do that for each um, each time period in turn so it's like a planning exercise a planning activity but it tells us or it tells the farmer and, uh, and the extension worker working with them what needs to happen when, how much resources are required, and it really helps people to plan. And of course, having done this, they may actually decide to change some plans on here. So it acts like a way of, of looking at, at, at the detailed management. So all the activities that I've described so far are things that happen with um, farmers and extension staff working with them a long time before the season, several months before the season starts. Um, as we get closer to the season, then we, the extension workers also provide a seasonal forecast and short term forecasts through SMS, uh, through radio, etc. And then at the end of the season, everybody reviews how did it go? How was the information useful or not useful? Um, were the approaches useful? And then learn for next year and hopefully improve for next year. So in summary, just uh, as a last slide to finish off, um, PIXR is, is an approach that extension workers can use with groups of farmers. It's aimed to fit in with, with extension workers' normal ways of operation, operating, and it helps farmers to make their own decisions for their own situations. It's supporting farmers to make their own decisions. 
Secondly, it helps to look at the climate, but very importantly, at what farmers can practically do about the climate, how they can deal with that variability and, and the change and what the options are. And it empowers farmers to choose the options that they think are most suited, but having explored them in an informed and logical way together. And to support that, it uses participatory tools to help with, with that planning uh, and look at those options. So I'm going to stop there and then we're going to have time for uh, some questions, which we'd be very pleased to try and answer. Thank you. Okay, hello everybody. This is Maria back and we are now handing over to to Peter again with the first question. Um, this is picked up from, from the questions we received before in advance, but at the same time I would in invite all the participants to type in your questions to Peter um, on the left hand side. We can take these questions up also at the later stage. So Peter, how can we explain the phenomenon of climate change in an easy language to rural communities? And the second part of it is what kind of tools or materials would you use? So we now it now we can hear. Okay, thanks Maria. Thank you everybody. <laughs> Can you, can you hear me okay? Thank you, everyone. Thanks for some great questions that are streaming in now. Um, just picking up on those first two questions that Maria's put there, how can we explain the phenomenon of climate change in easy language to rural communities? Well, essentially, that's what, what the approach tries to do, uh, the use of the pictures, the graphs, uh, explaining things very in a very practical way. Um, and it's really done through the use of, of of normal communication measures in terms of participatory uh, tools and drawing and explaining things. Um, we've got some related questions coming into that, so I wonder if I could illustrate, take a couple of illustrations. There's a great question which is uh, from Entung Sun, how can farmers visualize rainfall described in millimeters? So we're talking about rainfall in millimeters, how can farmers visualize that? So a great way to do that is actually to take a drum and to uh, so show it to farmers and say, imagine that this drum was outside and after it rained, every time it rained, you covered it up so you didn't lose any water. And then you took the cover off when it was going to rain again. And then you, you kept that drum there for the whole season. At the end of the season, the height of the water in there is the amount of uh, the number of millimeters and you can measure it and show people. And then you can actually show them what that means uh, on a graph. So that's a very practical way of doing that. Uh, the second question, um, how do we communicate climate change to rural farmers using scenario building? Well, in a sense, that's partly what uh, we're doing, but we're talking about short term scenarios. We're, talk we're talking about looking at the past over a long term and then looking at the next uh, few seasons and trying to help the farmers develop a strategy that will deal with the variability in the climate. And then I guess the scenarios that we're talking about are looking at how do you deal with the variability that farmers have already experienced because the future uh, changes that they are likely to experience are likely to be within the variability they've already experienced. So they're unlikely to experience something that they haven't experienced already. So if they can deal with better with what, they're, what they've had already, uh, they're going to be able to deal with the future better. And that makes it more practical for farmers to get their head around, to do something that's going to help me now, but it's also going to help me in the future. 